Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. Back in the uh, Higher Hertz life again. What we're looking at this time is uh, Acon Digital's Multiply. It's a kind of chorus. Uh, whether technically it should be called a chorus is slightly questionable, but I guess they've also covered that in that they call it multiply. It uses a slightly different process. There are some things that are similar. They don't explain exactly what the process is, and maybe because it's not as odd as it might appear, uh, but we do get an interesting and a different result, and, and that makes it a thing worth considering. Plus, it is a freebie. So let's move through some presets, just as a control. Here is our core sound, which is a combination of an electric piano-ish sort of thing, and a sort of divide down-ish sort of a string. Now this is going to give us a strong sense in our ABs. So that's the dry sound. If we turn on the default, obviously a marked change. I was going to say improvement, but that's not entirely fair. Big, but yes, we do bring a lot of body and smoothness and width as well. There is one thing that we should be aware of in here in the AB purely, just that this is prone to adding about 3 dB. Output. You can see the levels jump there. Roughly 3 or so dB is what I worked out it is to be. So if you're going, oh, well, it just makes everything better regardless, yeah, it's probably not the best way. I did set it up for A being with the with um, Reaper's effect on off control, but it seemed a little slow or laggy, uh, where it was just quicker to do it here. Cool, that is nice. So we run through some of the presets. Copycat being the um, the vocal doubler sort of thing. A, a little sort of a, a reverb. Dimensioner, so playing with stereo, what have you. Same sort of thing. a lot in, in a really nice kind of way. Being <laughs> somewhat transparent and a huge amount of stereo, you've got to take a lot of care with that, i got to say. Gentle warmth. Possibly a little undernamed. It's not really honky tonk, but it uh, it works nicely. That's a very nice preset. It gives this big feeling of glossy, shiny, and some movement without being at all obvious, even though in the AB it's incredibly obvious. An attempt to emulate the Rhodes chorus. Not sure what romantic means. So a, a kind of a Rhodes or a whirly tremolo. Ultra fat, you might find a use for it. 
This is just showing off its ability to have an echo, but it's definitely not an echo or delay unit. And back to our default sound. Uh, it's kind of good in the sense that the presets seem to be there more to show you a style of thing than to say here are all the things, just drop these in. Uh, because of course we all should know that that's the worst way to try to mix because you're never going to get anything that really matches even if you go, oh well I think that's good compared to that. It's not necessarily suited to the song because mixing is always about showing off the song, not showing off your ability to use presets. We've discussed the 3 dB boost. Again, it's only a case of saying, well, in direct ABs, the plus 3 dB is always going to make it sound better. If that's a thing that you're concerned about, tie the pair of these together and then a pull it back by 3 dB and AB from there. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's no biggie at all. Now, one of the things that makes a different sound out of this is that they claim a different process. Uh, exactly what the process is they are not necessarily clear on, or maybe they're incredibly clear. But speaking of incredibly clear, this does sound very clear. So what I assume is that maybe rather than using a straight sort of cloning process, a more traditional, you know, plug things through analog wires and electronics and what have you, that they might be using an FFT uh, grain or similar sort of thing. Just to give you a sense of what that's like, let's just for the moment bring in a similar-ish sort of uh, device. So no, no effect. Multiply. Let's bring in multiplier. Now, while we've got a similar result, we've also got quite a different sort of result. Obviously, some of that could be to do with how much we have um, we've panned each of these. Actually, no, it's not the times that I should be setting up. It should be the, uh, the panning. If we simply hard panned all of these, this is a freebie on high hertz site. We get that wider sound. When I designed this, yes, I designed this. I didn't want everything to be as you know, wide, wide as some people insist on making them. But we get a similar-ish sort of result. But if you listen carefully, this has a more transparent kind of a sound. Multiplier will at times give you a fairly transparent sound, but it was never designed for that. It was designed to feel like a kind of old-fashioned chorus, but in a cool or different sort of a way. It wasn't like I was trying to be retro, it was just, I like that sound. Um, but you can, with this, get comb filtering, which is where each of your taps, your echoes, is very close. So you, you can end up with them all starting to flange or phase. And that's where you get that swirly turning over kind of a sound in a lot of choruses. So the aim was, and while it's not particularly apparent here because the way it's designed will kind of move that out of the way. Plus this is using a lot more variety in timings. I think that theirs is using very similar sorts of timings. So if we, we can hear that beating. Whereas we don't hear it there. So it's just a different approach, but their approach does end up giving us a different sort of a feel. And that's what makes this unique and worth looking at 
if you are after a different sand. There are times where that turning over feel, uh, to be mean washing machine feel, that you can get from a chorus can be a liability. I actually like it, but sometimes you don't want it. And this does deliver to a great extent something that bypasses that. They say on their website, which we shall have a look here, uh, a unique twist, each simulated voice is processed with a phase randomizing filter. They don't really explain how that goes. Uh, you could try and say, well, it's secret source, dude, but I don't think there's any secret source in the DSP community per se. Uh, maybe it is, don't know. But somehow they're randomizing the phase of each voice as it comes out, and that reduces that sense of hearing it swirl round and round. And it does work. It definitely does work far more than it doesn't. There is a trade-off, but everything has a trade-off in life. We lose some of that really beautiful classic feel that we get out of a, a classic chorus from doing that, but we gain a very different sort of result. It's fairly high-featured. Akon, if you haven't encountered them, I don't really get a, a, a settled sense of who they are and what they do. They have a... Um, well, it's, it's an audio handling program, similar to uh, the more old-fashioned thing when audio wasn't really being done indoors in that sense. In some ways, you could think of it as a little similar to Ozone, but it's more around clarifying audio. But they've also got these other technical processes. I feel, just looking at their stuff, that, that their stuff tends to feel technical, and this sounds very technical which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, they extract various of their processes and also sell them as uh, standalone, or give them away in this case, as standalone VST, but their main program is for post-production. So for someone like myself, when I'm doing podcasts, which I do quite a few of, like when I'm editing them, I guess it's aimed sort of a little bit at that arena, noise reductions and what have you. But I'm not sold on noise reducers more often than not, uh, and it's just not a path I've gone down. Um, I can't remember whether I've tested their uh, noise reduction units or not, so I don't really want to get into that part of the conversation. I do remember, however, downloading this quite some time ago, and it didn't run nicely in reason, and I found exactly the same this time around as well. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a shame in the sense that I would keep this. How much I would use it in pieces, I don't know, because I've not had the situation in which I've put it into battle. But that sound is rather appealing in a certain way. I find it a little off-putting because it sounds so sterile and digital and incredibly clean, and it's not always the sound I'm after, but sometimes you just want a chorus that isn't doing the swirly-swirly thing. As you can see, I've got other solutions, which you also have access to with things like Multiply, which can get rid of that. But this is a different take on that and a very credible one at that. Price, I've always established, it's free. Now we will look at features. For this, we're going to switch to the string sound. I might even brighten that up just a smidge. There we go. So that way we can very clearly hear the changes. It's not about whether you like or don't like that sound. It is all about looking at what this device does. We've seen that there are presets and also reminded you you should not use them other than to understand how its architecture works. Obviously, there's some stuff up here. Preferences really don't have anything of particular concern in them at all. Uh, there is, nicely, access to an RTFM. Now, the RTFM doesn't really tell us anything uh, unless there's something in here, blah, 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 blah same, same. Stuff, but it takes us to the using, which is a relatively Captain Obvious, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's nice that it's there, full marks for that. 
up the top, interestingly in Reaper, and I don't remember noticing it in Reason, but I wasn't looking. I just noticed that it can actually tell me where its input source is coming from. I guess that's a VST3 thing, and it may be host specific as well. We've got the ability to undo and redo. Uh, I would normally do all of that at a control Z. Let's actually just try that and see what happens. Yes, that works. We've got an A and a B setting, so we can set things up in the A and the B and A, B them, and we can move from one to another. I worry if we're constantly setting things up and going, oh, is this better than that? And then sending this to that and then trying again, it seems to me that we lack courage. But it's a feature that some people want. It's got that there. We'll work our way through in a logical sense. Now, it works on added voices. No added voices, one added voice. We can go up to six added voices. Let's just pull the other function out. Now you notice here that they do sound a little strange, but that's normal. If we take um, Hertz Multiplier uh, and just pile up those six voices uh, and make no movement to them, then yes, they will sound a little thin and comey. So, That's to be expected. We can add up to six voices and we can choose how they behave. Okay, that's pretty cool. The, the level of granularity compared to say multiplier is not the same, but it's simple and it is effective. We then got the ability to spread them in stereo. How that's actually behaving I'm not sure, because if we've got no movement, we have to say, how does that become stereo? Normally a chorus becomes stereo, like where we've got one voice, you know, one input, the original, and one cloned version. Normally that can't become any more stereo, unless of course we pan the input and the output, but then that's probably weird and it's an unusual choice. Normally it becomes stereo from actually that one clone voice being a pair, and the LFO doing this left to right. This doesn't do that, and besides, we've got no movement here, but it becomes stereo. Another reason that I think that this may be um, FFT or some kind of digital process where everything's sliced up into, well, little slices, and then you can put those spaghettis of slices in different places. I feel like I'm hearing frequency difference left to right, which would indicate that, that they're slicing frequency kind of like this and then going, we'll put some of them here and some of them there, kind of like that. Um, it works, it is the sound of the plugin. Whether that's the same process here, is a little less clear. And this is where I really wish that developers would actually explain what they do. It, it, to me, it makes it much easier to know how to use the plugin, not only in the way it was intended, uh, to get the results they say I should be able to get, uh, but also to be able to go, ooh, what if I did that? But nonetheless, you can have up to six voices and spread them in stereo. Please be very careful as a mix engineer, please be very careful with how wide you make everything. Very easy to say, oh, well, this sounds best with lots and lots of voices in lots and lots of stereo whilst you're in solo. Well, if we get a mix, like when I'm sent mixes where every sound is like beyond the edges of infinity of stereo, it's almost impossible to mix and get a nice result because we've no longer got any contrast. Stereo works on contrast. Yes, this works very well here because we go from mono to stereo and we go, ooh, it's widened out. But if we don't have that sense of contrast and everything is just like splashed out to the edges of infinity, then we can't actually balance anything properly. Uh, and you can't focus an instrument in a particular place, which means that you have turning up levels on absolutely everything trying to out compete the stereoness of everything else. So please go very cautiously. In an ideal world as a mix engineer, I would question in a lot of instances whether this should be applied in the first place. But 
If it's the sound, I also get applying it. But just be very careful how stereo you go. Um, you can, as a mix engineer, narrow things down, especially if your mixing console comes with a de-stereoized kind of a knob. Um, but it's not always the same result. So just go carefully. We've then got this pre-delay in milliseconds where we can take our cloned voice and move it back. Now this artifacts in a clunky lumpy sort of a way is not a criticism per se, but again, to me, just indications that inside this, I reckon that this is all FFTs, all digital cutting, into, cutting it into scraps because it has to recalculate when I'm doing this. Whereas if it was purely delay based, like um, Hertz multiplier or Hertz delay, when we move that, we're gonna hear it wow, as in go, um, simply because we're warping time. This is doing a little bit of time warping, but it's more doing that, oh, shit, I have to recalculate kind of thing, which is indicator of. So we can go out to quite a late delay. Meaning that this can be used as an echo. The problem with it as an echo is that for some reason there is no feedback. That may also be because of the fact that it's an FFT kind of thing. Reason for those interested does have a similar sort of device uh, in the quartet. We've got an FFT and a grain mode. They don't sound exactly the same and there's not, they're not as uh, incredibly clean uh, as the Acom is, but similar fundamental approach. Normally you're, for chorus, you're gonna keep this fairly short. So that's your main setup for your voices. We've then got for normal chorus, a frequency modulation. It's a little odd that they call it frequency modulation because we naturally start to think FM, DX7. Uh, while frequency modulation is correct, we're modulating the frequency, we've again got to ask, is this a time modulation which creates that wow from moving the tape back, backwards and forwards, so therefore it goes up and down in pitch? Or is this quite literally that we do have all those digital slices and decide to play them back at different rates? Similar, but not the same. But frequency modulation is just a slightly odd term. So we can set the rate. And that's really rather nice. So one voice there. Creating that kind of Selena sort of thing. That's cool. We could be a little less dramatic. And that really is charming. Quite apart from the 3 dB boost, it's... It's going to work beautifully in a mix if we don't want it to be as stereo. Really, really nice. Yes, I do that all the time with more delay-based things, but the sound here is a little different. We've got our rate and depth. Have a click to get things back where they were. Nice variety of what we can do with those sounds. So the frequency thing, cool. Let's bring him off, go back to a voice count of one. And now we can amplitude modulate. Oh, stereo. 
That's a little unexpected. Let me just go back to this, because it sounds so... That's odd, that's different, that's inconsistent. Not necessarily wrong, but it's... This is just frequency going up and down, which was what I expected. But here, where we add amplitude modulation... Yeah, how that stops as I move parameters. Again, this, this must be some kind of digital guts. That's uh, that's fine, that's part of how to get this sound, but just be aware if you try to automate this in a mix, it may just not behave right in the automation. So make sure there's nothing happening as you move from A to B, or you maybe have to have another track or another instance of this to swap between. You just gotta get creative. But that amplitude modulation, you can see it there. It is left to right, left to right, left to right, which is different from the... Um, other mode where we've got a pair of them or three of them they kind of even each other out it's merely the way that it is but because this works one way and this works another way I wouldn't mind if this had a button in that being the case I wouldn't mind if both have a button to say do you want to work like that or do you want to work like this or a knob which allows us to mix the two even Better, but this is a freebie, so we shouldn't butch too much. It's just a little odd here, but we can narrow that down. So that becomes a tremolo. A kind of odd sounding tremolo, I will admit. It, it's, I'm not convinced that I would choose that compared to a more traditional sort of tremolo. But the option is there, and that is interesting. So that becomes, that becomes attractive enough. Okay, that's, that has given us a nice cello sound. So it definitely you can get nice results from it. You've just got to understand how it's going to behave. Um, so just a case of coming to terms with that. So amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Having the pair of them work together gives us a really nice feel. I mean, I know I'm in headphones and this is not a battle and I would do it in battle with reason based on this, but the problem is all I got in reason were splats. I think that's what happened when I first tried it, why it sort of went and never looked at it again. Uh, but a lot of years down the track and I don't think it's improved, which is sort of a shame. While I know reason isn't the most uh, common door that everybody rabbits on about there is something incredibly special about it and I don't know when I find something that works and is re is unique and, and finding something that's unique like this is a bit rare then yeah a bit saddened if they've made the decision that they don't want someone like me to use it so really nice sound that's combining amplitude and frequency modulation. They're both running at different rates, so we get this feeling of taking our not entirely inspiring divide down style string. And making a really nice cello kind of feel. No, it is not meant to sound like a real cello sample, but I would use this over a cello sample far more often than not. Let's bring in the electric piano and see what. Sounds very natural. Pretty flat and dead.
very nice. I've got to say I'm kind of impressed. Well, I'm more than kind of impressed. I'm very impressed and I was not expecting this because I hadn't played with the amplitude modulation at all. I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but the, the difference is in how it behaves. Well, as you see, I initially thought it was a liability. It turns out to actually work very, very nicely. It still would be nice to have knobs or buttons there to be able to give ourselves more flexibility, but maybe they played with that and realised that they just didn't add anything. I don't know. Um, that's one of the downsides of feeling like you can never really engage with the developer. Um, it does take something that I thought was very digital and technical into something that uh, is a lot more lovely than I thought. So it changes my impression perhaps of Akon from being just a, oh, well, we're going to apply algorithms to maybe these are a company who do actually specialise in beauty, um, would have to try some more of their toys to see. We've then got this EQ. Now the EQ, switch it in, and then we've got low and high pass filters, high and low, and this bell in the middle. They've got the ability to set the width of these high and lows. I'll just turn those out so those shelves make a bit more sense in how they look. But as you hear, they don't affect the original signal. Akon do have an EQ, which is based around this, this technology, this behavior. Uh, looks interesting, but I think it's become out of date and off the pace. This is quite pleasant and easy to use, uh, but without uh, their EQ having things like dynamic features, you've got to say, well, why am I going to spend that kind of money, especially when you've got competitors like the, the Kirchhoff, um, or if you prefer it, the, the, the fab filter. But nonetheless, it's, it's a simple and elegant method. The EQ applies to the... effect signal. It is perhaps overkill in this situation. But let's have a look. It is possible to have this really influence the overall outcome. Just like um, aggressively EQing your echo or your reverb, you can influence the overall perceived sound. So it's definitely not a case of silly shouldn't be here, but just a case of saying, well, okay, how do we want this to be changing the perceived weight or feel, like that changes the weight of this sound. Light, heavy. Just adds this feeling of, of size to that sound. So. Yes, like the amplitude modulation initially can seem a little silly or pointless. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So we can change the width here and the width here. That's kind of cool. Obviously, if that's a feature of their EQ, that's rather nice. bringing out the Bowie sound. Of that. So 
that speaks very well for their EQ in terms of usability. So while they may not have dynamic features, and I would like to see that coupled with the dynamic, and I have not tried their EQ, uh, but I sort of thought, ah, for the price, no dynamic features, why would I move to that? Its usability uh, and sound here is uh, pretty nice. I have other EQs that will do this kind of thing, but this sounds and feels nice. Again, not being used in a mix, but just in terms of sound creation here, that's working nicely. So we've got a pretty good set of features here. And as you see in my use, they've actually exceeded their individual, what they do. That's a mark of a good plugin. I like how simple and clean it looks. Yes, some people will be, but it doesn't look like an 1176 from 1964 or whatever year they were from. To me, that's a great thing. It's really very clear and functional. Um, and once I come to understand how it works, which is relatively simple, then it's good. In terms of the mix, obviously you've seen me switching these in and out. I actually like the, the fact that they do that. Double clicking will return anything. You can enter values and what have you if you want. You can also tie these two together. So if we were doing direct ABs, as I said, we might drop that. Three dB or whatever it is to get the same. Which is going to be more than three dB because of that boost. about the same. So it's about 6 dB. And that really, I, I gotta say, that sounds really nice. It's in headphones. So it's free and that's good. I should run through my good and bad. I meant to do this at the beginning, but I didn't put it on my running list because I was too busy writing them out. So, alrighty, what is good? Well, it has a very smooth sound. It does not sound like a traditional chorus. So if you were to take, say, uh, the Hertz delay, uh, use it in a chorus mode, which is the switch all the way across to the left, uh, then you will get some of the swishy swishy, but that's possible to loosen that up as well. But it sounds very tape bucket brigade style approach. It is very much a delay that's doing this to do this. Whereas this doesn't give you that sound. It's it's kind of like the, the cliche difference between an analog synth, you know, let's say an MS-20 or MS-10 uh, against uh, a digital synth like a DX7 or, you know, you Jupiter 8 versus DX7. You're going to have two complete uh, different opinions about which one is right and which one's good. This is kind of like the DX7 of chorusy type things and is capable actually of more beauty than I initially gave it credit for. Uh, that's good. I am genuinely impressed. It is pretty versatile. Uh, as you're hearing, we can use it to get different results without feeling like we're necessarily compromising what it does do. And it's free. Uh, they didn't make me sign up. They didn't make me jump through any hoops to get it. It is free. These are actually all really strong positives. The bads, well, as I've said, I had to move to Reaper because it creates splats in Reason. I'm wondering if that's a GPU type thing, but that said, I think I found that it might have done that ages ago when I first tried it many years ago. I don't 100% remember, but I remember not lasting long with it, but that may also be partly because I do remember it sounding what I was thinking of as much more clinical, and I was still at the end of my Jupiter 8 or nothing kind of childish phase, whereas now I'm far more in a digital kind of a phase, uh, in which case I can appreciate what this is and appreciate that we can apply a, an analog -y style thinking to it and get a bit of both. But the splats in reason are a problem. Uh, whether anybody's reported it, I don't know. I'd hate to think that it's been reported and they've gone, yeah, who cares? Um, because I would use this if I could. And in using it, um, 
especially uh, playing with this EQ. If I were in an EQ frame of mind, then I would be tempted to look at that EQ, and especially if it had things like dynamic or something like that, um, then yeah, it could be a contender at the right price. Because as I say, while I've got the ability to make these shapes, I really like Q range, but there are some limits on it in its behavior. It also doesn't behave perfectly in reason at times. Again, GPU, I think, is an issue. Maybe that's just my 2070 Super. There's been some indication that 2070 Super is not as super as it's made out to be. I don't know. Um, but, you know, they're good things. A downside is it, it sort of really only does chorus and multiplying. Uh, you might go, but why is that an issue? Well, it, when I'm looking at something, I'm looking for something that does as much as possible. And within the context of this review, this has actually impressed me with, with a greater range than I anticipated. Uh, but it is only a chorus. I'm used to choruses that will also do flanging and maybe even phasing, you know, the, the whole gamut of modulatory kinds of things. Not a terrible thing uh, because it does have some pretty strong strengths as well. And as I've discussed, it can be a bit clean compared to the more old-fashioned delay-based devices that, that I'm used to and tend to really, really love, this can come across a little bit clinical, as I say, more like a DX7 compared to a Jupiter 8. But that, that bad is very much paling the more that I'm getting a sense of what this can really do nicely. But nonetheless, it is a thing to be aware of that if you grab this and your Jupiter 8 clone and go, but my Jupiter 8 doesn't sound very Jupiter 80 anymore, it's now starting to sound a little bit DX7, that's simply probably because you've got the wrong tool for the job. Or you just need to let go a little bit and go, what can I get from this? Because I think that there's a fair amount of beauty to be had out of this. Because as we hear, we've now got a really, very usable, very lovely sound out of this device as it sits. And that doesn't seem to be the same kind of result or feel. It's sort of transparentness, which can feel, as I say, like a, like a bad DX7 thing. I wouldn't have gotten that out of my delay-based devices like Hertz Delay or Hertz Multiplier. In terms of, as I was setting this up, I did end up a few times where I had both of these running at once. And that can get some very, very nice results. Now this is pretty random. Let's turn this into a reverb. that a little bit. Let's just shorten this release, just so that we really are very aware of it. That's nice. side. So we're getting some of the advantages of that, what I'm referring to as sort of dx 70 type chorus approach, and then offsetting it with the more Jupiter 80 style chorusy approach, which in this instance is um, now playing its role as a, um, as a reverb, but we can pull that back.
So there's nothing to say that you can only use one approach. The device naturally does use the one approach, and so long as you're working with it, it actually does a really nice job. By the way, they were my final words. I actually like this a lot more than I anticipated, uh, even though I had spent some time playing with it before. Um, it's, it's a good one. It really is, bar the fact that you do need to test to make sure that it's going to behave properly in your door. Reason is a bit of an odd duck in terms of doors, but it's not the only one in which things can be done a little differently. Uh, would be nice to see that sorted because it would be nice to use this one. If you have any questions, pop them down below, preferably after hitting subscribe, because remember everything in this stuff you're not paying for, but you do need to pay forward in some way, and it's all about the dreaded algorithm and activity, such as likes, watching to the end of the video, um, and particularly engagement. Having conversations with us is the best kind of pay that you can give us, because that way we become more visible and therefore more people engage with what we do, which if you think that what we're doing is good, surely you'd want that, because it helps keep us going to get you more stuff. Most importantly, get out there, have a play, have a great day.